everyone. Welcome to Teach Technology Education Among Confident Humans, like us, where we learn from each other to make use, the better use of our technology. I'm Ben Rosenthal at Sustainable Computing. Um, as many of you know, I coach Mac users in Berkeley and beyond, generally one-on-one -on -one sessions, answering questions, sharing insight, trying to erase frustration, um, and making room for confidence. Uh, I find that my clients are either looking to increase productivity, pursue their passions, and or become more flexible with their devices. This session is being recorded and I'll post it to my YouTube channel later today. So today's topic is keyboard shortcuts. Absolutely one of my favorites in the world. And I think in the context of celebrating Earth Day this week, this month, um, it's a great opportunity to think about how we increase efficiency with our computers um, and in effect, potentially use less energy um, using our computers, our own energy and the computer's energy and the grid's energy, all the energy matters. Um, so I have a bunch of tips to share and I'll leave room for questions along the way. Um, and then a few minutes before the hour, I'll offer some additional information about how to stay in touch. Uh, the core content of our discussion will be over at that point, but I'll stick around a while longer for anyone who wants to stay. So um, first, I'm going to send you into breakout rooms with just one or two others. I'd love for you to take a minute to introduce yourself and um, share one or two things that you are excited to learn or teach today. All right, welcome back, everyone. Um, I'd love to hear from a few of you. Uh, love to hear your name, where you're calling from, and uh, one thing that you learned or shared in your breakout. I have a quick question. Were the breakout rooms um, randomly generated or did you do them intentionally they were randomly generated i think they are generated based on when people show up in the meeting and i did notice that the two of you were in the in a room together yeah so i got to meet alice <laughs> um and we we you know talked a little bit about ourselves and we have a lot in common especially since she's my sister so um you know it, it was fun um as far as using um shortcuts we do I do use them a lot, um, not as much as I'd like to, because some of them are just not second nature. Mm -hmm. So if it's not, I quickly go to the mouse and, and go to whatever has to be done. But I do tend to use them, and I wouldn't mind adding a few others. Um, I was saying to Midge, this is probably one area you can't help us, but QuickBooks uh, is not very good, and I'd love to be able to use shortcuts there but they don't seem to have them and nobody there knows them got it had to get that but cool. we'll see, if we, can, that, we'll we'll see, see if we can find a way to address that okay thank you anyone else so i would say that uh, um, i use keyboard shortcuts a good bit but i'm kind of intimidated by uh, ones on the trackpad because i'm not i don't feel confident i'll remember them and keep them straight mm -hmm. and i have spent uh, several years trying to uh, trying to encourage my wife to realize that anytime there's an OK button on the screen, she can hit the return key. Mm -hmm. And I've never succeeded. So everybody's at different levels about all this. Absolutely. Sargina, did you have a comment? <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Sargina from Oakland. I've been with Ben, what, about five years? Four or five Something years? Something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I have a whole list of key shortcuts from the from the early or mid 90s um, and I use I use quite a few of them um, so I'm just curious what new ones I can add to to my list excellent and, yeah so thank you cool well let's uh, let's dive into this exciting topic um, uh, I think the the first thing that I think is really important is, at least among keyboard shortcuts that appear in uh, menus on the menu bar, um, there are those little glyphs, those little uh, illustrations or icons that appear next to the letter. Um, I'm going to share my screen and um, make this a little bit more visible. 
Uh, so let's see. Made a few things and share away. Great. And oh, gee, more things that are in the way. Well, I didn't want to hide Zoom. Um, so, uh, for example, in the Finder, um, so all of these little uh, glyphs next to the letter that I'm uh, pressing, the, 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 the keyboard shortcuts are primarily um, a single key on the keyboard, on the main part of the keyboard, that is modified by one or more modifier keys. Um, the up arrow is shift, just like on a typewriter. The, uh, the, the clover is the command key. Most of our modern keyboards have these glyphs printed on the keys. Um, uh, this one down here with eject uh, next to the command is option. Um, and this one over here next to make alias, uh, the caret is control. So when you're looking in the menus to learn the keyboard shortcuts that exist, um, it's important to know what the glyph means so you know which key is associated with it. Um, so that aside, um, but in the context of these menus, um, there certainly are many shortcuts that have already been pre-programmed. Um, and many of them, I would say, are pretty logically defined, um, you know, new. The thing that you do first in most applications is at the top of the menu, of the file menu, the first menu, and it's command N. Uh, and so command N makes new things. Um, and in the finder, it makes a new finder window. Um, and then once I'm in a finder window, the, the second thing that I might do if I'm organizing my files is I might make a new folder. So new folder, shift command N. One of the beauties of the Mac that I've always appreciated is I can use a shortcut even when I'm in the menu. And I don't know if this has ever changed in Windows, but in Windows, I've never been able to make to, to press a keyboard shortcut while a menu is open. Um, and if you look closely, while I um, press the shortcut, the command that's associated with it, if your eyes are quick enough, you'll notice that uh, the command gets highlighted as it gets used. And so I made a folder. Excuse me, Ben, is there any place where we could get a, an entire listing of all these different glyphs? I. Uh, well, the, the, the glyphs are just, um, there probably is. Um, there probably is. You know, I was going to mention this later, but certainly I can mention it now. If you go to the help menu in most applications and you search for keyboard shortcuts, uh, you will probably find a list of keyboard shortcuts for that application. And so here is the help information for um, general Mac OS um, keyboard shortcuts and um, a number of applications listed and uh, it, more information. I don't see a, a, a description of the glyphs here per se. Um, that's something I haven't looked for before, but I'm sure if you search on the internet Mac keyboard shortcut glyphs or modifier key glyphs, you'll probably find exactly what you're looking for. Ben, I can, I can copy um, or scan and send you um, the sheet that I have. It only has the command. It doesn't have the other, um, the other two oh. symbols. Well, then your shortcuts list must be truly lacking a lot of shortcuts if you're if you're lacking all of the ones that have other modifiers it so I, I hope we'll be able to add some some items to your list great Thank so you. if um i could tell you where that is if you look if you type what are those symbols shown in menus on mac uh -huh. we'll bring that to you 
So just just nice. type what what are those symbols? Right. Well, you can type you know any of those keywords. So like symbols menus gets you that entry. But and, it has that list. The list you wanted to. And there I'll is the it. list. Yeah. Got it. And That's it. there are a nice list of 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 key glyphs that um, I never even thought of before. Great, thanks, Isabel. That's a really great tip. And you can print that. If of course. Sometimes I have a, the all the these you can print, and it's nice to remember. Yeah. Uh, print is in the sh at the bottom of the share menu in the help window, since the help system itself doesn't have a menu bar. Great. So, um, well, Felix, you you mentioned that really key shortcut of the default button earlier. So let's dive into that a little bit. Um, suppose I. Um, I need an application where there is such a dialogue. So I'm going to open pages. And uh, I'm not going to open pages here. Let's just make a new document. And no, truly, I want to make a new document. Pull that over here. All right. So I'm going to create a document. and. I'm going to save this document in all of its emptiness. I'm going to press Command S for save. And the, the primary action of this experience, outside of naming the document and navigating to where I want it to go, is saving. So the Save button is highlighted uh, in my primary highlight color of my system, in this case, orange. Um, I think the default color is usually blue, but uh, you can customize your highlight color. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, if I'm ready to save this document, I can just press return. And if I want to cancel, pretty consistently across the system, cancel is escape. And, uh, and the same as in the Finder, where I pressed Shift Command N to make a new folder, I can press Shift Command N for this new folder button. And here I can make a new folder. I can press Return for Create, or I can press Escape for Cancel. And it's pretty consistent with everywhere else on the computer that these shortcuts exist or these interfaces exist. Um, all right, let's 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 step a little bit beyond these common keyboard shortcuts um, and talk about using the keyboard to jump somewhere else in a list. So I have my home folder here. And suppose I, you know, suppose my hands are already on the keyboard. I don't want to have to move them to the mouse. That's inefficient. Um, so, you know, if I want to jump to my movies folder, I can press M. Um, and there, I've already jumped down to the M's. I'm, I might not want that. I might want music, so I can just use the arrow keys to hop around. I can use the right and left arrow keys to open and close the hierarchy. Um, and, uh, you know, even if I'm down somewhere in, in the hierarchy, uh, you know, files inside a folder, I can press the right arrow key to jump back to the parent folder and, or sorry, the left arrow key in, in that case. Um, and then left again to close the folder, this in a list view per se. Um, so, you know, using the keyboard to jump around and, um, and uh, navigate through a hierarchy without using the mouse at all. 
So why would you not want to use the mouse at all? Do you really think this is faster than the mouse? Or I really think that using the keyboard often is faster than using the mouse. Do you think it is on navigating a hierarchy? Like, yeah. Like this? Really? Yeah. You know, if it's a, it, let me, you know, let me open up a more complicated list of files. You know, if I have 27 items here and some amount of, um, you know, I can uh, go into work and then I have another 30 items in here. Right. Um, if they're in all in alphabetical order, right. um, then, you know, suppose I want to get to job search, I can press J-O and I'm at job search. Um, now, I'm not one to navigate the finder in this way most of the time um, in a finder window uh, because I like to use launch bar, which is a great utility for opening things. And it also works for navigating my file system. So job search is a, a folder that I have navigated to in the past. Um, launch bar knows um, with its intelligence um, you know, that it's sort of the only job related thing that I have on the, on the computer in terms of name. So when I open launch bar and I press J-O-B, there's job search. Um, but in a finder window, I still think that by and large, using the mouse requires extremely precise movement. Um, and a lot of my older clients who are um, a, little bit, a little bit shakier on the mousing experience, I think would actually benefit from using the keyboard more uh, to navigate through their file system or, or elsewhere in the applications that they use. So, uh, so one more thing. So on the launch bar, did, did you create that job folder icon or how did that come about? Job search is, is one of my folders. You see it here in my work folder, right. in my documents. Right. And so, you know, it's, it's, I think it's probably one of the only items on my computer that contains job in the name. So when I open launch bar and I'm using, I'm using, essentially abbreviations to right. locate the items on my computer. You know, if I was looking for the My Files folder, which I do commonly do, I would press MF and there's My Files. And Launch Bar serves to navigate my file system um, with the keyboard rather than picking up the mouse. How did you open the Launch Bar? I have the command space shortcut set for it. The shortcut that is commonly used for Spotlight. Launch Bar is a third party application um, that I adopted many years ago um, that I prefer to use for that kind of navigation. Um, whereas Spotlight I use when I don't know where to find a particular file. Um, and mm -hmm. I'm literally searching my computer or elsewhere for things that I think I had somewhere. Now, if you're using the same icons, the well, same shortcuts, same shortcuts, how do you get to the spotlight? I use command option space for spotlight. I see. So okay. I will I will go into that in a moment when we talk about creating keyboard shortcuts. Okay, thank you. Um, and um, I don't have anything else to say on keyboard navigation in the finder. So let's jump to creating keyboard shortcuts. So I'm going to go to system preferences and uh, open keyboard. And then I'm going to go to shortcuts. And I'm going to go to app shortcuts. You know, there are a handful of stock categories of shortcuts here um, for system functions. Um, App shortcuts is where all of your custom shortcuts live, the ones that you've created for your various applications. So I'll tell you one, um, 
one shortcut I was really proud of um, when uh, when Mac OS Catalina came out a year and a half ago, uh, and I installed it last year, early last year. Um, I was really frustrated that Apple changed the shortcuts in photos. The default shortcut for uh, previewing a photo used to be the space bar, um, which, which mimics the experience of quick look in the Finder and other applications where you can tap the space bar to get a preview of a file mm -hmm. and then tap the space bar again to dismiss it. Um, and that experience made sense to me in photos where, um, where that, was, uh, that was a normal experience mm -hmm. to have. Thank you, David. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I think they changed it from the, just the space bar to different shortcuts for, for, for zoom, you know, essentially preview and dismiss or zoom in and zoom out. Um, and uh, I don't even remember what they changed it to. I think maybe one was return and one was escape or, or it doesn't matter. Um, so I was very quick to hop over to keyboard preferences um, and I set the shortcut for close viewer in photos to the space bar. So I'll show you how I did that. Um, the, if you're in photos in this case, the command is, gee, I don't even remember where it is. So I'm going to go to the help menu and I'm going to, I know it contains the word viewer and I'm going to search for viewer. And the help menu, when you search for keywords that are included in menu commands, will tell you what menu item and show you the menu item. So here's the, in this case, open viewer menu item in the image menu. Um, and when the view and the, the standard shortcut is the space bar. But, uh, oh, wait, didn't I get rid of that shortcut? I wonder if they changed it back in Big Sur. Mm. That would be smart. <laughs> I'm glad to discover this just now. I think they've changed it. It was before Catalina. I think before. You think it was Mojave they were, that they changed it? I think in Mojave, they stopped it and drive me nuts and then it okay. came back. All right, well, good for I have them. No idea why. They must have gotten enough feedback from, from customers who said, this is a crappy change, make it go back. Absolutely, yeah. All right, mm -hmm. well, poor example now because um, we can't exactly use this as an example, except that we can just for the sake of demonstration. Um, so uh, again, here's the command in the image menu, close viewer. And so in system preferences, I can add a shortcut. I can choose photos as the application. And the menu title is close viewer. And the keyboard shortcut is supposed to be space, but they won't let me use space anymore. <laughs> well, so much for that idea. Let's find another example. Um, we, we enjoy your frustration. Dave. I'm glad. I'm glad. All right. This, the, here, here's a we better one. We all experience one. it. Yeah. All right. So let's come back to pages. Uh, no, not this one. Let's do it this way. Oh. All right, I'll make a new document and I'll bring it over. All right, pages, create. Okay, so um, 
I frequently export my pages documents to PDF. So I really wanted a shortcut for export to PDF. Um, in other applications that I use, the export command is shift command E. So that's a shortcut I'm familiar with already. So um, I'm looking again here in export two, the command is PDF ellipsis. The ellipsis is key. Um, so again, here in keyboard preferences, I'm going to make a new shortcut. <coughs> the application is pages. The menu title is PDF ellipsis. Well, what is ellipsis? Well, it's option semicolon. And if you wanted proof of that, um, you could, uh, if you have easy access to it, you could show the keyboard viewer, uh, which you might have somewhere on the menu bar. And uh, here's semicolon. And when I hold the option key, it turns into ellipsis. Um, and the shortcut I want for this command is shift command E. And I click add. And instantly, there's my shortcut export to PDF. That is great. And you can do this with any. With any menu command in any application, you Whoa. can create a keyboard shortcut that you want. And um, I don't remember what happens when you create two shortcuts in one application that conflict with each other. Um, let's do it as an example. If I, in pages, make a shortcut for rename and try to make it shift command E, then um, it doesn't work. Mm. The first shortcut, the first command retains its shortcut and the latter doesn't get programmed because they conflict with each other. Um, in, in some of these categories like Spotlight, um, if you have two commands active that conflict with each other, like I do now, um, you'll get these warnings uh, or these cautionary symbols that indicate shortcut used by another action, because obviously these two shortcuts are the same as each other. They can't both be used for their respective actions. Then, yes. Other than replicating a, a du other than duplicating the the code, what else would create a conflict with a? with a shortcut that you're creating? Um, I, I don't think, well, there, if there is a global shortcut, one of oh. these shortcuts that okay. works all of the time and is not specific to an application, mm -hmm. um, if you have one of those shortcuts that is the same as uh, one of your custom app shortcuts, only one of them is going to work. Okay. Um, I think that's a good, good example, a good question on, um, in this context. Uh, obviously, you see I have a number of shortcuts, um, or at least you can see two here, um, one in pages for exporting to PDF and one in numbers for exporting to CSV, because that's the most common export format that I use when I'm making a spreadsheet. Um, they both have shift command E, but because they're two separate applications, they work in mm. each application um, and don't conflict with each other. Hey, can I ask, uh, when you're adding a shortcut, um, the menu title, you're using something that is already in the application, you're not creating a new menu title? Correct. You can only use menu items that exist. Okay. 
All right. Um, let's step uh, in another direction here and talk about text replacement. Um, another way to use the keyboard to um, make your uh, computing experience more efficient uh, is to not type as much. Uh, and Mac OS comes with a somewhat basic text replacement um, option where you can program some kind of abbreviation or word or what have you um, that you want converted to some other text, uh, some usually longer string. This is really designed for um, not very complex strings of text, um, single lines, um, or you know, it could be a paragraph, but but not. We're not talking about multiple separate lines of um, you know with paragraph breaks. Um, there are other solutions that can handle that level of complexity. Here, for example, um, I regularly type my personal email address, um, various places where I am, um, so that I indicate how entities can contact me. Um, and so I replaced, uh, I, I indicated that when I type the at sign twice, I want my email address inserted. And so here in this document, for example, let me get a text box. And if I type at twice, then I'm offered the option of inserting my email address. I can either choose it or I can just continue typing and it will get inserted. Um, if I you know, intentionally was typing the at sign because I wanted the at sign twice in the text, then I would press escape um, and the insertion would not, or the replacement would not take place. You have to do that in a text box or can you just do it on the document? Well, this is the document, but this is a document that doesn't otherwise have a text frame. This is not a word processing document. So oh, okay. in, pa in pages, you have the option of um, having a document body or not. So you, in normal word processing, you might be used to starting a document and automatically having a place to type text starting in okay. the top left right. corner. That's optional. And when you're creating a document for page layout, um, having a document by body might be problematic. And so you can just convert the document to a page layout document and work with individual text boxes that you create. Okay. Okay. Um, so, you know, the <clears throat> Mac OS comes with text replacement um, for fractions, for example, so that you can get the fraction character, single character for say one half by typing one slash two. And so on. So, you know, I've done this for simple things like email addresses um, and, uh, you know, ways that I sign emails um, and a handful at my, my, uh, my, my Zoom meeting ID, my meeting link, um, those kinds of things. In addition to certain abbreviations or contractions that I want to make sure my devices always convert um, to what I'm usually typing. Like if I type okay, um, I want it converted to all caps okay, rather than the K being lowercase, which might be the normal uh, typing experience. For more complex text replacement, I recommend Text Expander, uh, a great little application um, where you can create all manner of snippets of text, and a snippet does not need to be in any way small. Um, and 
I can, well, I'm not gonna create one from scratch because I have so many to share. Um, let's see, um, something complex. Um, I'm not great with examples here. All right, well, um, gee. So one thing, it, how do I want to explain this? All right, I will, I will create a snippet. So suppose I have a form letter that I am um, writing to lots of people and I don't have say a newsletter, you know, MailChimp type database, um, but I just want to use my normal email system to send the same core content to a number of people. And I want it going to the, you know, I want it, I want, I want to talk about people's first names and so forth. I want to address people individually. So, um, Let's call this first name. And then we're going to say, um, uh, Um, great. So nothing too complex here, but, but, you know, four separate paragraphs, um, and two things that need to be filled in when this gets typed. So let's say I, um, let's just use this text box as an example. Um, and gee, did I even give that thing a shortcut? No. Um, let's call it um, I'm going to call it uh, TRP for teach response, but that conflicts with something. Oh, it sure does. Um, how about I do t.rp? I'll uh, skip the P. Teach response, t.r. Um, Text Expander offers a significant amount of, of flexibility in terms of the abbreviations you create. Um, and you can use punctuation to, to um, in the abbreviations as well. Um, instead, I think, I think Mac OS only goes as far as letters and numbers. All right, so there's my teach response and I'm gonna put it here, t.r, and I get this pop-up where I can type in the name of the person I'm writing to and then I can tab over to the comment field um, and uh, I can write in, um, you know, something that the person comments commented about, and then I can press return. And there's my customized um, text string uh, from very little typing, assuming I remember the shortcut and um, what someone shared in the session. Does that make sense to folks? Yeah. yeah. There's a little macros. They're little macros, exactly. Okay. Um, and I, you know, one key thing came up while I was doing that, the tab key. The tab key gets you from one field to another in a dialogue. So let's see, let me find a dialogue that has multiple fields. 
Um, uh, anybody have a dialogue in mind? Here's one, messages. So if I am messaging, um, thanks David for being my example. Um, and uh, <clears throat> David is selected in my list of recipients and I press tab and I'm in the field for typing a message to David. Um, and uh, it's kind of a poor example because there's only a couple fields there. Let me see if I can find, uh, well, I think a website would be a good example. So, um, yeah, I'm drawing a blank here. Um, When in doubt, go to a search engine. And there's only one field. Another bad example. Um, well, I'm out of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> move um, on. I'll move on to something else. Great. Um, well, I, I don't know. Is there anything else to say? I have a question. Great. When you do the text expander, it says that you can have, um, you have to have one series of letters. You cannot have like a sentence. Like if I want to say my address, I cannot type the beginning of my sentence with a, with a, a space in the middle. I have to say just something that is just one piece, no space. If not, he won't pick it up. Um, well, you, you, right, you can't, you can't put a space in your abbreviation. Right. But you can, why would you put a space in your abbreviation like in the first place? If I say, I want to do, I want to type my address. I sure. want to type 237 and yep. then start, start my address. Because if I type 237 ah. in somebody's name, that it, it will go on, you know, and type that instead of the word I want to do it. So I Got was it. trying to find a way. Mm -hmm. So I, I think what you're what you're going for is you don't want your you don't want the letters of your address to be your abbreviation for that um, for that uh, expansion. So for example, my shortcut for my address is H mm -hmm. home. H H O M E gets me my address. All right. So it needs to be something that you would never use any other way. Exactly. Right? It needs to be something you would never use any, in any other context. And I've run into that challenge with a few select abbreviations. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to remember which ones I've had trouble with, but obviously I had trouble with them. So I changed them to something else. Right, because the more you have, then the more you have to remember what you decide. <laughs> so it gets complicated. That's true. Or maybe you won't have so many and maybe you'll just focus on the ones that you use regularly. Or right. maybe by virtue of using certain shortcuts to expand text regularly, you'll commit them to memory. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Right, so you just need to find the essential. Yes, exactly. Okay. Cool. What else? What else is coming up for folks? You said that, and I'm not sure I got it straight, that you could only put in a, um, going back to the shortcut, if something exists, if it, if, I mean, if it already exists, that obviously you don't need it. So what it, was it that you said that we needed to have existing before you, you put in the shortcut? The thing that needs to exist is the menu item. I didn't say that a shortcut needs to exist for the menu item, but um, the, the menu item itself has to exist. 
So like new finder window already exists in this menu. And if I wanted to change the shortcut for new finder window to say option N, I can do that. App shortcuts, finder, new, new finder window, option N is a bad shortcut to use because um, using just the option key um, as a modifier um, without the command key uh, or the control key, for example, is problematic because option N produces a special character. Um, but I'm going to do it for the moment. Option N for new finder window. And my shortcut for new finder window has changed from the default command N to the custom option N. Does that make sense, Phyllis? I think so. And I'm trying to see whether this would work for me with as I say, uh, QuickBooks has a lot of missing uh, options. Are, are, um, are, are the options that you're referring to uh, items in menus? Well, that's what I'm going to check. I don't think so, but I'd have to look back. An example, a uh, simple example would be um, when you're entering a, and I don't know if this is an actual one, but it happens often, let's say an invoice. Mm -hmm. And then you say, enter, you have a choice of either canceling or entering, at which point, once you enter, it closes the screen. Uh huh. And I'd like to say, enter new or something of that sort. But right. I'm not sure that's an option in the menu. I'd have to look and see. Right. Um, it sounds like those are, you know, custom behaviors of QuickBooks programmed by their developers and not actually translated to menus. Okay. So if it's not in a menu, in other words, the menu has to exist. Um, yeah. They yeah, the menu has to exist, or there has to be some kind of functionality in the settings of the application for for identifying and programming these shortcuts. Okay. Some some applications have those kinds of, of features, but but it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me if QuickBooks doesn't. Okay, so I can't just invent my own, <laughs> create my you own. You can't version. just invent your own. Nope. That's too bad. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else before we close? Mm, I'm sure there is. And the that listing, that's the one thing I definitely want to get, uh, that listing that we had we just do a search for the max symbols and mm -hmm. that would bring it up yep. and we can print them. Okay, that yep. is what I need. Excellent. Okay, thank so you. So I have a question. So I just, I'm proud. I just did the Zoom link. Mm -hmm. So I did ZL mm -hmm. and then I'll say, and then I, it's gonna turn it if I say, here is my ZL, mm -hmm. here's my Zoom link. So then I just put the ID and then people click on that and they could get me to Zoom to my personal ID, my personal link. This is how it works. Yeah, do you, do you wanna share your screen and demonstrate what you did? Uh, sure. Okay, Bye Felix. So share screen. Okay, can you see this? Yeah. So I did my phone number, so three, like you did, like right. three hyphen, right? Then 237, that's my address. Mm -hmm. Then I put Isabel at, and it fills automatically. Nice. That's for, for my, on the, if I send a text or something. Mm -hmm. Then I did on my way that I did. And then mm -hmm. ZL, and I will type, here is my ZL, and then it will be Zoom link, and then it, it just shows it. Okay, but that's okay. your phone number. Or no, that that's is my phone number. sorry. It's, that's sorry. That's your meeting ID, but that is right. not a link to to your Zoom meeting. That's right. So, so I thought something was wrong because I couldn't go to I couldn't go to Zoom preferences because we were on the call. So I need to put the entire. You need to put the the entire URL in there so that it gets printed out. 
Oh, I see. Now, uh, yeah, pretty, I, get, I get it, of course. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. pretty easy to do, even if you can't find your, your, your meeting link printed somewhere, you can just form it yourself. Uh, if you, you if you if you put the if you edit your 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 translation there right so a, i'll put a, https colon slash slash uh, no colon okay sorry zoom.us slash j slash and take out the hyphens i see okay use the, you, you can okay. also use the arrow keys to get over there i could yeah okay so that's it that's it press return okay all right excellent okay okay and then someone just could click in there and that's yep. faster than creating going through zoom to do it right sure does okay. she have to have Zoom link in before the URL? No, that's just what she wants her her recipients to see when I she see. when she enters I that see. shortcut. Got it. Very cool. Nice. Thanks, Isabel. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ben, I'm a little confused. What Isabel just did. So, <laughs> in what applications are those shortcuts going to work? Because I just did the same thing as you did with the double at sign, and I tried to put it into like a Word doc, and it just came up a double at sign. Word might not know how to translate those things. Most applications mm -hmm. will, okay. but Word is a oh, special Word. one mm -hmm. that is so proprietary in so many ways that it just mm -hmm. doesn't play with the system-wide controls that we have on our Macs. So it's kind of unpredictable. What it's kind of unpredictable, work. yeah. Okay. But it would work on pages. It's absolutely. That's a Mac. Yeah. yeah. Now, mm -hmm. if you specify the application that you want it to work for, in other words, you can have a generic one. Um, and if it's not working with Word, can you then create it again, specifying Word so that Word is now aware of it? Because uh, you did earlier say that you can choose the application you want it under. If you are creating a keyboard shortcut, then absolutely you can add a shortcut to Word in that way. When you're using text replacement, you can't tell an application that doesn't know how to listen to okay. do so. But maybe in words, there's ways to do that. It's possible. Within words. It's possible. You have to look at it. You have to look also, at it because... system or, or sorry, third party applications like Text Expander will work in Word because they're they're working on a higher level. Um, than mm -hmm. even the Mac OS, um, uh, you know, text replacement shortcuts um, in order to, to be uh, used that way. I mean, this is why I have a hard time working with Google because Google doesn't do the, doesn't do the keywords. So I'm like, I'm lost. Mm -hmm. They're different keywords and I have to learn them. I'm like, I don't want to do Google Doc mm -hmm. <laughs> just because of that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, uh, it's been a great discussion. Um, and I just want to close out with a few words. Uh, really appreciate you all attending. Um, uh, and I'll stick around a, a bit longer um, to continue the discussion if anyone wants to stay. Um, but I want to share, uh, you know, the best way to stay in touch with me uh, is to subscribe to my newsletter in addition to reaching out for support. Once a week, I publish Mac Mondays and occasionally Tech Tuesdays, featuring news, tips, and short tutorials. Uh, often, I'm sharing what I'm discussing with clients, recommendations of specific applications, insight about how to choose new hardware, um, and ways to increase efficiency. Um, I often am also sharing what's new in my life. Um, certainly, I would say, as the Mac world continues to evolve, there's no shortage of content to write about, um, but I would love to hear your input and suggestions as well. Um, you'll get an email from me later with, um, with uh, a link to the recording of this session, as well as an evaluation. I'd love your input. Um, and I'm putting that in the chat as well. Um, and uh, 